Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. And thank you so much for your uh, patience for the last few minutes. We um, have had a, just a few technical uh, issues with uh, with Zoom. Uh, this being the first uh, the first webinar that we're uh, running in the series, so we really appreciate your patience and thanks again for joining us. Uh, my name is Chris Allison. I'm head of commercial partnerships uh, based in Los Angeles for the North America team. Uh, I'm going to be acting as your uh, host and moderator uh, for today's webinar. We've got a great lineup of uh, speakers today, uh, including a couple of our colleagues from our uh, Sydney team. Um, I'm just going to talk through the agenda uh, today and then talk about a couple of housekeeping items before I hand off to our speakers. Um, so just to cover the agenda today, we're really excited to be joined by Robin Mack, uh, who's our Executive General Manager of Commercial based in our Sydney office. Um, he's going to spend a few minutes talking to us about uh, the broader view of uh, tourism from Tourism Australia's perspective and uh, more broadly um, some of the strategic focuses we have as an organisation at the moment. Uh, then from him I'm going to hand off to uh, Jane Whitehead who you all know she's our VP for Americas. Um, she's going to give a bit more uh, insight and thought in terms of the North American market and then we're going to hear from some of my colleagues talking about some of the activities and initiatives that we are focused on at the moment uh, to make sure that we're keeping uh, Australia uh, top of mind for both our consumers um, and our advisors uh, across the US and Canada uh, during this time. Uh, after that, we're really happy to be joined by Rob Dugan. Rob is our General Manager of Marketing Strategy. Um, he's going to spend uh, some time talking to us about uh, the strategic uh, framework that we have behind uh, our, re our recovery focuses, uh, some of the signals that we'll be looking at in terms of restarting our tourism efforts in a broader way, um, and maybe touch on some of the insights that we're starting to glean uh, from, from uh, the US and Canada. Uh, and then to finish off, uh, we'll be joined by Lee Sorensen. Uh, Lee's our General Manager for Industry Relations, and he's going to talk to us about uh, some of the insights and feedback we're seeing on the ground from our uh, product and operators in Australia um, and particularly um, as we're starting to look at the restart of domestic tourism in Australia uh, there as well. So we've got a really packed agenda today. I know we're a bit late so we'll, we'll try and make sure that we uh, finish on time. Um, some of you did submit a couple of questions uh, in advance so thank you for those. We'll have some time at the end to, to cover off uh, questions. Um, if you do have questions uh, that come up during the webinar today, um, at the bottom um, of your control panel, you'll see a Q&A uh, section. Uh, so we ask you to uh, pop your questions in there um, and then we'll endeavour to answer those uh, towards the end of the session. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm going to hand over now and introduce Robin Mack. Uh, Robin is our Executive General Manager for Commercial. Um, it's a bit early in the morning in uh, Australia, so we appreciate all of our colleagues getting up early and, and talking to you. So Robin, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, yeah, I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, and it is early in the morning over in Sydney, but it's fantastic uh, to be with you all uh, here today. And uh, thanks for Jane and Chris and the team for this opportunity to be able to, to speak with you. And they've got a great series of programs coming forward, future webinars as well. So yeah, thank you for all for joining. Um, uh, Pip Harrison, our MD, is an apology. She really wanted to be here this morning, but couldn't make it. But I know given this is going to be a series of webinars, she is planning uh, to come in and, and join in a future one but she does send you her best regards in the meantime. Um, I wanted to start off really by just saying a big thank you to each and every one of you from the industry over there. Um, and this thank you is for a full 2020 thank you because you know obviously we started the year with the bushfire crisis um, and you guys really helped and supported us through that process in getting the factual information out there when we produced um, the the map that was on australia.com so a massive thank you for everything you did at the start of the year sharing that with your customers and your networks that that really helped and got great traction so thank you um, and then as we moved into the the covid world and the virus situation and that um, crisis unfolded a, a massive thank you for everything you did for repatriation of your customers from australia when they needed to um, and just the constant comms that we know you've been doing and, and cancellations and changes and rebookings and um, trying to save those bookings as well. So a, a massive thank you uh, for that. And I guess as we go 
beyond that, now we're all, we're, we're all talking, we're in the dreaming phase when people can't travel and they're dreaming. So about their future holidays and a, a final thank you on that to say, you know, when you're getting those dreaming messages out on Australia, that really helps us and, and supplements and complements what we do as a national tourism organization. So a massive, massive thank you for that. Um, uh, I guess I wanted to start by saying, I'm giving you the global view, but just the importance of North America to us in Australia. Um, both Canada and the US were doing so, so well with new aviation capacity uh, increases in um, particularly the important leisure holiday purpose of visit and visiting friends and relatives were all in the right trajectory and going the right way. So. Um, I guess to start with our goal as a national tourism organization is to be first and best out when we can at the right level uh, to make sure that we're supporting you guys as an industry because we know how much you're hurting um, but we also know how much the industry in Australia are hurting many of whom I know you know really well over here um, and just it's it's a global pandemic um, but we just want as a destination to be first and best out and do everything we can um, to get back uh, to a near normal as possible, which we know won't be overnight, but we're certainly uh, pe passing that way. Um, so we haven't actually gone from a global perspective, we haven't actually gone dark in any market. So we've had our social activity. Um, we've been doing a lot of more content in that dreaming phase has been coming through. Uh, but I thought it'd be good to give you a bit of an overview on the phases of recovery as we see them at Tourism Australia. And we'll just put a slide up now that kind of brings to life um, those phases. Uh, and it really shows you there that you can see on the screen, hopefully, the kind of three phases that we had. Across the top, you can see crisis recovery and new normal. That's what we actually had in place for the bushfire situation. Uh, and then we complemented or supplemented that um, with the different stages as the virus um, came through. Uh, and the, in the crisis mode, we talk about there being a, a situation of panic as we all dealt with the new reality of what was happening. Um, and then the restricted movement with border closures. Um, and then we, as we go into recovery, it's that rising optimism. Um, and then the new normal is when we have free movement again. Uh, but one area of this chart uh, that I would like to kind of highlight is the funnel uh, part that you can see there. And that just shows you where we play as a tourism organization um, with what we're doing. So, and the funnel is basically when you're dreaming uh, through to planning in the middle and then actually booking. So it's that convergent funnel from dreaming to, to booking and visitation. Uh, and on the left there, you can see in that panic mode, it was just a very light touch in terms of social and content and being respectful of the situation and the media that was consuming people's news feeds at the time. As we move into restricted movement, then we go into uh, being a bit um, deeper on that, but we can move into that planning and lots of content um, that can come through on that side. Rising optimism increases through the funnel again. And then when we get to free movement, it's when uh, we can really push and drive the bookings. Um, and that's where, and you, you can play a part in all of those with us because the customer state is the same for you, obviously, as it is for us. So, you know, that dreaming content and then work with us as we get towards um, that free movement, which we hope will come um, sooner rather than later. Um, I think uh, the other part to complement this as well that we see as being hugely important, two areas uh, globally, is the importance and the necessity for aviation. It goes without saying, we need aviation to come back. Um, it's a key part of our recovery strategy. Um, and I think that'll be covered in future webinars to give you a bit more insight uh, on that. But it's certainly something we want. We're working closely with all the Australian airports um, over here, uh, and the airlines uh, here and globally um, to talk about that recovery piece and how we can come back because um, it is hugely important. Uh, and the other hugely important area is you in your area because from a destination when we come through this, the consumer will have changed in some way, we know that, but the complexity of Australia as a tourism destination is still there. Um, you know, people uh, still get confused on how to plan and book and overwhelmed by it. It is complex. So that's not gonna change overnight. And we know that you play such an important part in that. So getting the distribution back, getting you guys firing and um, giving opportunities is, is very important uh, for us um, as well. 
Uh, the the other side, I guess, from an Australia side, and you're probably following the news over here, but um, our government introduced a three-step process to get us out of um, or handle the, the COVID um, virus here in a COVID safe program, three steps to get us back to intrastate travel, uh, sorry, interstate travel, because um, borders are closed for those who don't know in all states except for New South Wales, Victoria and ACT. All of the borders are closed at the moment and we're starting um, to see some easing of restrictions as more people can gather uh, together. It does vary by state and it's being eased by state as we get back in, um, but we're hopeful we'll have um, all of borders open at some point hopefully in the near future so we can um, kickstart that domestic tourism, but that's certainly in place. Um, and businesses are obviously looking at how they can make sure they're, they're um, COVID ready, uh, for want of a better word, uh, for when they come out of um, this crisis. Um, domestic is obviously a focus for us at the moment as we move into, and we've been looking at domestic as a destination, as a tourism organization since January. Uh, in the bushfire situation, we went back into the domestic market. That's continuing. We know it's going to open up first, and we're looking at how we'll open up with that day trips, the intrastate, and then the interstate. But I think a highlight for you and to think globally is the opportunities that's coming from that domestic program. Um, from content is a big push that we're doing. I talked about as being in the dreaming phase. So content is a, is a really big play um, and there's a lot of coming through. And Jackie will talk to you about a bit that was developed for Australia with a global lens. And she'll talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, the other part that's being developed um, for domestic, but will have a great opportunity globally is, is a focus on road trips. Australia is a great destination, as you know, for those iconic road trips and short road trips, um, all types um, with themes around them. So we're doing a big content development on Australia.com um, for the consumer to plan and look at those uh, opportunities for, for road trips. We see that as a big play and internationally as well. And we've started to see that over the last few years, the, the increased appetite and uh, knowledge um, uh, need from, from the North America market. Um, before I hand over to Jane, though, I think one thing that I would just like to acknowledge is that burning question of when those borders will open. Um, we don't have the answer to that yet. Uh, it's obviously being worked through. But what I will say as a tourism organisation, we are working so closely with the government and the states and territory tourism organisations around that. And as soon as we can share anything, rest assured, we will share um, and we will let you know the situation as soon as we're able because um, we know that getting that knowledge out there is, is obviously key. Um, so I will think we're taking some questions at the end, uh, Chris, but I'll, I'll hand back to you at that point. Awesome. Thanks so much, Robin. Yeah, there was, um, I know a couple of you did uh, submit some questions when you were registering. So we do have those on hand and we'll be grilling uh, Robin later uh, on those. So thanks so much, Robin. I really appreciate Thank that you. update. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to uh, my boss, Jane. Uh, so Jane uh, is known to all of you, I, I should hope, by now. Uh, Jane's our VP for North America. Uh, and uh, she's going to talk to us about, uh, more specifically, our views for this market. And, uh, and then you'll hear from some of my colleagues talking about some of the initiatives and activities that we're undertaking right now. So over to you, Jane. Thank you, Chris. Um, and hi, everyone. And thank you for joining us today. It's great to connect. Um, first, I just wanted to, we, we do want to invite your feedback on this new webinar series um, and how we can make them useful to you. So we're, we'll, um, we're planning to certainly use them to provide updates from Tourism Australia um, and also invite guest speakers on from a range of organisations to share their perspective on the market, the industry response to this crisis, um, outlook and, and trends in consumer behaviour um, and how we need to respond to it. So we certainly um, welcome your insights and ideas on topics and speakers um, that you would like to hear from. Um, and we'll plan to, for the time being, um, hold these um, probably every two weeks. Um, so also um, appreciate any feedback on, on frequency as well. But um, as we navigate this crisis, we'll, we'll certainly um, uh, you welcome welcome your thoughts on on what you would find helpful. Um, so um, just to Robin's point about how we've been planning in phases. Um, so from the North American team um, perspective, we've we've certainly been um, lining up with the the global approach to that. 
So um, in this restricted movement phase, um, we've really been working on what we can do now to keep Australia top of mind um, and inspire those customers that, uh, or those consumers that are interested in, in dreaming and starting to plan future trips um, so that we're well positioned when we um, can resume normal activity and, um, and people can start to actively plan and make bookings. Um, we do know, uh, we certainly get a lot of feedback from um, all of the partners that we're talking to at the moment that um, you know there are a lot of eyes on Australia and and, and certainly um, you know how Australia's been sort of handling this crisis um, and that you know, a lot of positive perceptions around that and we also think coming out of this crisis that um, there will be certainly um, um, with our high value traveller that we we target um, a real appetite to bring forward kind of those. Um, destinations that are top of people's wish list to get to one day um, and those uh, you know dream destinations and iconic destinations and iconic experiences um, that there will be a lot of pent-up demand and certainly we know that Australia you know consistently ranks um, top of uh, destinations that North Americans want to visit so we think there is an opportunity to make sure that we're really um, top of the consideration for when people can resume um, travel and that there is some appetite even now to sort of start making plans for um, further out um, and so we want to just make sure that we're, we're engaged with um, our target consumer through this process so um, we have been looking to amplify a lot of content, really highlighting you know, the range of experiences that you can have around Australia, um, certainly um, focusing on our, our key pillars of um, nature and wildlife, um, great aquatic and coastal experiences, food and wine, um, and the indigenous and rich indigenous and, and modern culture, and certainly our people as well. So over the weekend, um, hopefully you had the opportunity to tune into um, the Live From Oz promotion, where we really worked with a lot of um, our industry in Australia um, and our friends of Australia, um, uh, ambassadors and, and advocates. Um, and so we were really um, proactive in, in amplifying that in this market and certainly pitching um, that and other inspirational and virtual uh, content and certainly had some, some, have had some, some great interest from, from media in that. Um, Jackie will talk to you um, a little bit more about the Live From Oz and other promotion that we've got coming up um, and, and Chris Maggio will also talk to you about some of our um, PR activities and results. We will actually have a, a content promotion coming up with select media partners um, including Travel and Leisure um, and that will happen over the next, uh, uh, next number of weeks. We're also looking at how we can engage and support trade partners and advisors through this period. So we've got some, uh, we're getting some really great engagement actually in, uh, from advisors in our Aussie specialist virtual training and education and, um, and Glenn will take you through um, some of that activity shortly as well. The team is now working on a program to extend those initiatives uh, beyond June. Um, also, as we've uh, obviously had to unfortunately cancel ATE and Australia Marketplace um, in August, we're looking into alternative virtual options um, to stay engaged with industry while being cognizant that obviously many businesses um, have had to furlough staff and so this will impact the timing and, and the formats that, um, that are feasible. Um, we've also been uh, planning our response for the restart period. So we really want to make sure that we are ready to go when we do get more visibility uh, on when those border restrictions will be lifted. Um, so um, Rob Dugan will talk to you about the, more about the framework um, in how we're approaching that as, as um, Robin um, touched on earlier. Um, and in the US market, I think we'll, we'll really, I mean, certainly um, coming out of it from a um, consumer marketing perspective, we'll be um, leaning on that brand equity that we've built up over a number of years with There's Nothing Like Australia um, and highlighting all the reasons that um, Australia always has that, that really high aspiration. We'll certainly be uh, focusing on a, a digital program to drive engagement with planning content and tools. But we'll really be focusing um, very much on, on partnership coming out of this crisis. And I think we are certainly, um, you know, our, our number one priority will be um, supporting industry in, in re recovering from this um, situation and, and restarting their business. So um, 
to Robin's point earlier about the aviation recovery strategy, we're certainly staying very connected to um, our aviation partners in this market um, and we'll uh, stay connected with them to look at how we can support the reinstatement of capacity um, at the right time. And we're also working on a platform to really support our key distribution partners um, as soon as it's feasible to do so. And so we will be sharing more detail about that platform in due course. So um, I'll hand over to the team next just to take you through a little bit more detail um, in uh, the activities that we have underway at the moment. Um, but I did just want to say thank you very much for um, so many of you have really um, been very proactive in, in staying connected with us through this period and, you know, giving us insight on, um, you know, just your, your insights and, and feedback on, on various issues and developments. Um, and please, um, please continue to do that. Um, we really welcome your, um, your insights and um, your ideas on how we can support you now and as we, we start to um, restart uh, as we come out of this crisis. So thank you. And I'll hand over now to Jackie Dunphy, who is our Consumer Marketing Manager. Great, thanks so much, Jane. So as both Jane and Robin mentioned, what we realize across the globe is that so many different countries are in different stages of lockdown. And so we really wanted to create a program that would help reignite and inspire travel to Australia while also being able to tap into some of the trends we're seeing across the market. We know that TV viewership has been up um, in most markets and also the live streaming of different events. So what we created and launched over the weekend is Live from Oz, which is an ongoing program of live streams really meant to tap into the key pillars of Australian life with the food and drink, wildlife, uh, indigenous and modern culture and natural beauty as the real pillars of the Australian brand and letting people be able to experience them um, in a way that is known as the armchair tourism. So what we decided to do um, and promote was this program across all the different markets to really reignite the dream and create inspiration to relaunch our domestic campaign and of course um, to be able to support the tourism industry and get some of the on the ground voices out there. So the programming of this event included uh, different events like the underwater reef tour, a wine and art pairing, kangaroo feeding, uh, a Uluru sunset, a night at the Sydney Opera House, a live stream from the Mona Spectra Light Show. So really it, we ended up creating and curating through our Friends of Australia program um, and other prominent Australians, 32 different live immersive tourism experience and over 27 hours of content, which was really great. Um, we did paid promotion of this across many of our markets and also launched this program with The Project, which is a really great TV show that aired on Friday night over the weekend in Australia. Uh, for that program, it actually had over 1.3 million viewers in that market um, as the launch zone and also was able um, to be the second most watched TV program in that market over the weekend. Uh, in addition, we actually had a few uh, segments run uh, in our Canadian market here that really helped to encourage Canadians to tune in over the weekend while we did a big promotion across Facebook uh, to be able to promote the live event, which was streamed on our website, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Um, so some of the uh, stats out of that event were that we actually had over 4.6 million minutes of content watched during the live event. And so that number is actually um, continuing to grow as we are promoting the content throughout this week as on-demand content. Um, we've decided to cut, cut down some of the content to make it a bit more consumable, but I still have it live and available across our website and um, social platforms to be able to be enjoyed by people across the globe. Um, and that promotion is not only in the US market, but we will also be promoting that in the Canadian market as well, which is really great. Um, and another, I guess, key pillar of the paid campaign that we've seen is that in the US, we actually had nearly 6 million people who um, were reached by the content that, were, that was running over the weekend through our promotion. So um, that was, uh, the biggest market out of any of the other markets that were targeted in this campaign. So really great um, to see not only the appetite for US consumers into Australia content, but also there was a lot of really great engagement throughout the weekend as well. Um, so if we go on to the next slide, you can see some of the comments um, that 
we were able to capture across social media. And it really shows that people are um, really excited about the opportunity to travel to Australia. So, you know, we have comments like absolutely stunning from Melbourne. Hopefully I'll make it to the Kimberley one day. So people were very excited to be able to see Australia from their homes and get excited once borders do open to be able to uh, enjoy the experience. And so from this, we'll continue to promote this content that we have available um, across our social channels as cut down versions in the US and in Canada. And outside of this, like Jane had mentioned, uh, we'll also be doing content promotion across those markets to really continue to inspire people to dream. And then eventually, um, as we get closer to bringing aviation on board and opening borders, to have them be able to actually plan um, and book their vacations. So um, in addition to that, we are also going to relaunch with all of our STO partners, our travel and leisure partnership, which again, that program will be heavily focused on content and also on social promotion, as we know that that's where a lot of time spent um, is happening across our markets, um, especially while everyone is still in this rising optimism fame, but definitely still uh, does have restricted movement as well. Um, so with that, I'll hand it over to Chris, who will talk a little bit more about the PR impact of Live from Oz and what we're doing in that space. Thanks so much, Jackie. And um, hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Really good to connect with you all during this time. And uh, apologies for the uh, golden glow on my Zoom background. I'd like to say that's, you know, a uh, golden hour in uh, Victoria's 12 Apostles. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not in Australia right now. But uh, someday, I hope to join you all there. Um, as Jackie and Jane had touched on over the last few months, um, we've managed a really robust PR and content driven program in North America um, with our partners, Citizen Relations, our PR agency. Um, and our whole goal of this program is to really create a, a baseline of inspirational stories that really showcase Australia and reignite the, the dream amongst our um, high value travelers. So um, as we're moving through the phases that Robin touched on earlier from, of course, starting with restricted movement into rising optimism, um, we're really excited to, to show some good, feel good stories about Australia that really do highlight the destination in a great way. So over the last few months, um, we were really excited to take a survey of the media and really drill down and, and ask what the media were interested in covering and, and what would really perform um, and resonate with, of course, a North American audience um, during this time. So um, we've circled or cycled through um, a bunch of different inspirational pitch angles, um, you know, touching on a few different things. So of course, um, offering a virtual trip uh, to Down Under, um, you know, letting Australian music transport you from your living room, book, books and experience Australia from your living room, um, really a bunch of different angles that got this content into the North American media space. and. Um, the results have been fantastic to date. It's really, um, we've seen, of course, 2.3 billion media impressions so far as a direct result of, you know, telling great Australian stories in this market. And of course, that's resulted in um, about $22 million uh, USD of ad value equivalency, which is huge. And of course, that's growing every day. But most importantly, it's been really, you know, wonderful to see um, top headlines in some of our top publications um, in this market, like CNN and CNBC and Insider, um, Forbes, just to name a few that, you know, really showcase all of the amazing stories that feature, um, you know, nature and wildlife, culture, all the pillars that Jane mentioned, um, and showcase Australia in a great way. So if you can just move on to the next slide, please. And then just to go back for a second to what Jackie had presented to everyone, um, our really exciting Live from Oz program, which um, had take, it took place this past weekend. Um, you know, from a PR perspective, we were really excited to partner with our head office, um, the team in Sydney to launch this program in North America and get North Americans really excited about um, tuning in to all of the great content that was, um, you know, brought to us from Australia. So. Um, it was a really exciting program, of course, for those of you who tuned in. I hope you got to um, catch a workout with Chris Hemsworth's trainer, um, some great sommelier-led wine uh, tastings, a performance with the Wiggles, of course, super fun for family entertainment. Um, so many great things that, you know, we got to share with the world and great experiences of Australia. And 
as such, um, you know, really before the weekend, what we did was as a PR team, we, um, you know, leveraged the assets and broke the news in a bunch of the top publications in the US and Canada. So um, just to name a few, of course, Thrillist, Nat Geo, BuzzFeed, um, it's really been wonderful to break this news in the US. And then um, just to go back to what I think Jackie had touched on a little bit earlier, um, we worked with CTV um, in Canada to produce a series of broadcast segments on um, key morning shows like CTV or Morning in Toronto and Vancouver, um, which actually our very own Jane Whitehead um, had a, gave some great interviews introducing the program and getting Canadians to tune in. So um, we were really excited to see that PR was highly successful in, in helping to drive um, all of those great tune-ins to all of our awesome Live From Oz content. So, um, to date, we have you know, a vast amount of impressions, um, 710 million, which is amazing. Um, but of course, you know, we're continuing to leverage all of the assets and all of the on-demand content um, for Evergreen Pitching to continue bringing those amazing stories from down, other, down under to North Americans. So I think that's uh, everything on the PR side that um, I wanted to share with you for right now. And uh, without further ado, I will pass it over to Glenn Davis, our Distribution Development Manager for Eastern US. Thank you, Chris, and g'day, everybody. Um, so yes, it's been a busy couple of months for us and the di distribution team here. So we've uh, had lots of activity taking place. We, around the start of the lockdown period in mid-March, we implemented a trade engagement program uh, with the aim of keeping our Aussie specialist community and also our, the wider travel advisor community around North America really engaged and keeping Australia front of mind. Uh, so there were several tactics involved with this and it really was all around um, encouraging participation with the Aussie Specialist Program. So we really saw an opportunity to tap into that desire amongst travel advisors to use this time to upskill and also increase their knowledge as they moved through the period of time of uh, amending or cancelling their clients' vacations. So uh, we've had a, a number of Aussie specialist incentives in place and uh, the, the program was all about not only encourage participation and registration in the Aussie specialist program, but also um, to increase the numbers of uh, STO modules and signature experiences modules that were completed as well. So you'll see that the results are looking fantastic. So we had nearly a thousand registrations with the Aussie specialist program since the uh, 15th of March. So in that two month period, to put that into perspective for you, we normally see around about 100 or 150 per month. So it's a real um, growth in numbers there. And what's really exciting is that we're seeing nearly 300 um, qualifications. So Aussie special, so travel advisors moving through the program to become a qualified Aussie specialist. Um, and as you can see that the numbers of state and territory modules that have been completed are almost up towards that 2000 mark. So it's looking really, really positive. So it really shows that there's a real desire out there amongst the travel advisor network to increase their knowledge. So the other tactic that we employed was the Wednesday walkabout series. Now this is um, a webinar series that, we that takes place every Wednesday. One is just finished by the way. Um, but uh, we know that there's a lot of webinars out there and uh, we wanted to do something a little bit different to the usual. Um, we wanted to cut these down in terms of time and make them a little bit more of a hosted discussion rather than just a standard presentation. Um, and we've had uh, like guest speakers from Australia. We crossed live to a Tasmanian wildlife park where we had a wildlife talk with um, a handler with a, with a wombat and, and baby Tasmanian devils, which was incredibly popular, as I'm sure you'd imagine. Um, and so we've had also our Aussie specialist ambassadors come online and they've talked about their experiences that they've had down in Australia. So it's been incredibly successful. We've seen um, about a 30% increase on the numbers compared to what we would normally see outside of this uh, lockdown period. So it's really positive to see. So we move to the next slide. Uh, this will talk to you about some of the activities that we've put, that we've put in place. So obviously there's a lot of uh, travel advisors who are uh, looking to keep themselves occupied and educated during this time. So what we've done is created a bunch of activities to help them along uh, that path. So we've created these virtual fam trips and this is really about um, uh, using video content to bring a destination to life. We're using our ambassadors video content, but also our 360 degree video footage that was, uh, that was filmed to really take the travel advisors to those destinations. Um, and also we're featuring quite a lot of content uh, from uh, the different Australian operators, states and territories and regions uh, to really bring that destination uh, piece to life. We're also focused on um, the live cams that uh, are from right, right around different parts of Australia. So live into, you know, a koala 
kind of um, habitat at one of the wildlife parks in Queensland. We've got the penguins from uh, Phillip Island. And also there's 3D kind of virtual tours of different museums and galleries from right across Australia. Um, Bearing in mind that uh, there are some advisors who are homeschooling at the moment, they've got some little ones. Um, what we did, what we also have created are some educational crosswords and some colouring sheets for the big kids and little kids. Um, and, you know, that's uh, just giving them some extra activities to, um, to focus on during this time. We've really stepped up our communications with the Travel Advisor Network. So we have filmed a video message uh, that went out uh, along the lines of that with love from Oz uh, content. Um, also our regular email updates and news, just keeping um, advisors up to date. And also we're just about hit the button and, and launch our North America Aussie Specialist Facebook group. So that's coming quite soon. And if we move to the next slide, you'll see that we're just in the middle of a trade media campaign at the moment. So this is both in the US and Canada. So this in the US, we're working with North Star Travel Group and in Canada, we're working with Baxter Media. And this campaign is really focused around that with love from, with love from Oz message through a series of 10 uh, emails that are going out at the same time every week. Um, and it's really focused on that educational kind of piece, uh, quirky facts, an image that will draw them in um, and with messaging from each of the states and territories. So it's proving very successful at the moment. We've got some strong engagement out there, some really good open rates and click through rates. Um, so that's been very successful. We also, as part of this trade media uh, program, we've also run a webinar with uh, North Star Media. So with Travel Weekly and the Travel Age West um, uh, viewers, and that was record breaking. So we saw some really good engagement with this, about two and a half thousand registrations. And what was really exciting was 1300 live attendees. And bearing in mind that we normally get about 400 to 500 on these webinars through North Star, um, that's a fantastic result. So we really focused this webinar on uh, being uh, for travel advisors by travel advisors. So we used our Aussie specialist ambassadors to talk about the experience that they um, had on their fam trips down to Australia last year. So it's been, um, there's been a lot there, been a lot of activity and it's really great to see such fantastic results coming through. So over to you, Chris. That's great. Thanks so much everyone for sharing. Um, that's uh, really great insight in terms of uh, what we're doing here. I think that summary really is just to impress upon you guys that even during this, uh, this particular period where um, it's, it's very difficult for our consumers to plan and book and our advisors to help consumers plan and book that we're just trying to do as much as we can to keep Australia top of mind to consumers and keep our advisor community as engaged with Destination Australia as possible. So uh, please, please keep an eye out for um, further initiatives as we look to extend some of the activities that we're doing. So I uh, appreciate uh, my colleagues taking the time to, to update everyone. Um, before I introduce Rob, I just want to remind everyone that you can ask questions uh, using the uh, question and answer uh, function, uh, which is, I think, for you guys um, participating at the bottom of your screen. So um, if you do have any questions, uh, please pop them in there and we'll cover them off at the end. Um, as you can probably tell, we are going to run slightly over, so we, we appreciate your patience and giving us an extra few minutes beyond uh, three o'clock on the West Coast and six o'clock in the evening for you guys on the East. But um, Really excited now to introduce Rob. So Rob Dugan uh, is our uh, General Manager of Marketing Strategy. And um, for you guys that do listen to our updates uh, from Sydney, um, you may have heard from Rob about three weeks ago talking about kind of our broader strategic focuses in terms of um, a framework that we're looking at and um, some of the research and signals that we're using to help inform our strategies. But um, we thought it was a really great update from him and we, we really wanted to have him uh, talk uh, to our, our local partners about that. So. Um, I will introduce Rob. Um, and Rob, I know you've got a bunch of content in here, but if you could try and keep it to 15 minutes, that would be amazing. Thank you. Hey, no, no worries at all. Thanks, Chris. Um, I will try and get to this as quickly as possible. And um, what I can talk about today is obviously some of those kind of more strategic things that we've been working on. And if, um, if this is going to um, continue, obviously, as it is, I can come back and I can talk more about some of the insights that we've got um, a little bit more recently as well. Um, but if you just want to flip through to the next slide, uh, you know, I think that um, unprecedented, unprecedented events is one of the most overused terms. It's um, the use of that is is absolutely kind of unprecedented. And if you've seen the Google chart, the Google search chart showing 
uh, rise in the use of that word. It, it's pretty incredible, but it's it's not wrong. These are unprecedented times, uh, and they're very very difficult to kind of manage. As a result, you know, after the bushfires, we were looking at um, similar markets and similar crises. So we're looking at Puerto Rico and the hurricane. We're looking at Japan with the earthquake. We're looking at California very closely with their fires. Um, when COVID came in, uh, we were looking at obviously mark um, similar situations. Looking at kind of SARS, but of course we blew past SARS in terms of the health and the economic impacts. And then we were looking at the GFC, the global financial crisis, as a better proxy. And of course, we've gone past that as well. So very difficult in these types of scenarios or these types of crises to find scenarios and proxies that are really useful in kind of planning for the future. So it's a slightly strange way to start a webinar saying that your job is difficult, um, but that's the kind of environment that we're, that we're kind of in at the moment. So very difficult to get accurate kind of forecasts. That doesn't mean it's not important to try, but it's really difficult. Um, I really like this quote on the next slide from um, Professor of Economics, uh, Jonathan Wright. You know, this is not a situation where you can push a button in, on the computer and out comes the number. It's detective work and it will mostly be wildly wrong. So when we've been trying to look through our crystal ball and figure out what's going in the future and trying to set targets uh, and, and, and do some forecasting, obviously we've, got, we've still at this stage got very wide um, ranges of, of, of scenarios and of forecasts. So they will, they will start to kind of come together into something which is a bit more accurate in the future. But at the moment, we're still going through that process, uh, but it's not the sort of thing what we're going to get right in this type of kind of fluid environment. So while the word unprecedented feels overused at this point, um, it, it's true and that's what makes it very difficult, particularly when it comes to forward planning. I think the issue that we've got obviously in this situation is that the severity but this crisis means that we need to, to, to have information that we can act on quickly to try and try and survive it, I guess. So we need to keep doing that so that we can be as accurate as possible. We've looked at kind of six things uh, recently. We're looking um, as ways of kind of managing this situation. Uh, obviously, that includes kind of scenario planning. So hoping for the best but scenario planning for the worst. Uh, we're laying down plans, even if we know that they are going to change. Uh, we're looking at the right type of data and the right type of time, which is really crucial. Um, but we are listening to a broad range of sources and making sure that we're getting lots of different uh, viewpoints. We're trying to make sure that we fish where and when the fish are. And we're obviously trying to think consumer first and trying to make sure that we stay really front of mind in consumers' minds. So that first one, uh, there will not, uh, sorry, if we just go to the next slide, um, there's obviously not going to be one day that things will go back to normal. It will be trial and error, which is a, a comment from our prime minister here. And I think, you know, if you look at the borders reopening, they're going to come back in fits and starts, potentially. Uh, there are going to be individual markets which uh, create kind of bubbles. And you're seeing that behaviour from lots of different governments around the world. So I think it's going to be on a on a case by case kind of basis. And there'll be lots of factors with kind of feed into that. But I know that we've been talking to, to DFAT over here uh, about how that kind of works and trying to kind of manage that and trying to get those borders open as quickly as possible. But there's got obviously going to have to be a higher degree of flexibility with how we plan for that. So scenario planning is important because it, it helps us um, understand how we should kind of behave in different scenarios but they're going to change rapidly, of course. Um, I won't touch on this in, in any great detail because I know that Robin's spoken about it uh, already. I think the important thing from an insight and a research point of view is obviously the criteria that sits underneath those, those headings. <clears throat> so how can we make sure that we can take advantage of whatever those individual scenarios are and what are the consumer mindsets that we need to talk about? And obviously, Chris and, and Jackie and the guys previously have talked about some of the activity that you can see in market already. Uh, and that's us trying to leverage each of the consumer mindsets at the right stage. Uh, so we're very conscious about trying to, to understand which stage we're in and trying to be the best at each of those stages. I think for us to drive the fastest recovery possible means winning at each stage, not just the end stage. And you can already kind of see that, see that happening in those activities because obviously the research shows really clearly that brands and businesses that invest through these types of um, crises come out stronger at the back end. So we need to make sure that we've got the right work for the right moment. Um, the next slide, how we're doing that and um, I'll come back again, take you some more details with this type of data, but we're making sure that we have the right data at the right time, not all the data, because obviously there is a huge amount of information out there at the moment and it's very easy to kind of drown in that. So we're trying to make sure that we're looking at just the right metrics at the right time. And what the right time at the moment is, is obviously with a high degree of frequency so that we can make fast decisions. But we're looking at obviously the physical stuff, our borders open, do we have air capacity? Um, really important kind of um, lead indicators like infection rates and consumer confidence, travel search, with, which I think is hugely important. 
and forward bookings into lots of different markets. And then looking at kind of sentiment tracking as well, which I can talk about in more detail later, things like booking and travel intent and perceptions of Australia as a safe destination, which I think is gonna be something which is uh, ever more important for travelers and particularly kind of older travelers. And then also working with the markets to make sure that we have a frequent assessment of that data. That's an ongoing conversation. Um, the next slide, I won't talk about this, um, but just to, to note that we're listening to lots of uh, lots of information so that we get a really kind of broad perspective on, on what's going on out there. But again, I can talk about that in more detail at another time. Uh, number five, uh, this, um, this ice cream kind of chart, you know, obviously what we're seeing from lots of different data sources and the experience of lots of different markets is that travel is returning from a shorter to a longer um, from a shorter to longer trips as they kind of spread out. So from a domestic point of view, obviously we're going back into the domestic market in Australia, and that's gonna be food and wine, day trips, uh, intrastate trips, and then interstate trips as people kind of get more comfortable and feel safer moving into, into longer trips. Uh, but from an international point of view, it's much, it's, it's, it's likely that the, the cl our closest neighbors will come back more quickly and our more long-term uh, long markets will come back um, over time as people get more and more comfortable with those types of um, travel scenarios and being on planes and whatnot. But we obviously wanna make sure that we are uh, reflecting the consumer behavior at each stage so that we can win at each stage and make sure that we drive that speedy recovery. Finally, um, we're thinking consumer first. So it's very easy for us to get caught up in, in the crisis. What we wanna do is obviously have an eye to the future as well to try and understand how we can come out of this crisis, uh, potentially even kind of more competitive. And obviously we're seeing lots of other markets use this as a moment to reset and to rethink how they're doing, um, how they're doing what they're doing. And they're looking at changes in consumer behavior, which I don't think will be drastic in lots of instances, but we certainly might see some changes in, in, in distribution and how people are buying tourism and also potentially some changes in, in value. So we're managing that uh, very carefully. We had an auto workshop on, on exactly this yesterday and we're really looking to understand what we can about consumers to try and figure out how we can meet their needs even better in the future and how we can obviously work with industry and work with partners to do that go ongoing. So three of the things that we were, we were looking at are the big themes of coronavirus, things like you know the fact that this is a dose of our immortality. So things like bucket lists can be very important uh, going forward. Obviously we're seeing really fast digital transactions transformation. I think this is the example of exactly that. Uh, I was seeing people with a really high control need and, and wanting to manage their health and safety much more proactively in future. So, so that's my last slide. There's one more in there, which is some, some good and free sources, which we've been looking at uh, amongst other things that we kind of subscribe to, but hopefully those are some, some ways that you can get some information um, quickly and easily and cheaply. Thank you very much, Chris. Cool. Rob, thanks so much. And I appreciate you um, speeding, speeding that along in the interest of time. So thank you. Um, one, one thing just to probably reference, uh, which I think we've mentioned before, we're, we're actually undertaking a, a quite a significant amount of um, market research of our own to look at some of the signals across all of our key markets. So I think um, maybe next time, uh, Rob, if you have some time, we might get you back on and talk about some of those signals and insights that we're seeing from our North American consumers um, and maybe some of the differences that we might be seeing between the US and Canada, even, even at this early stage as well. Yeah, of course. And we've got more of that data through quite recently. So absolutely very happy to do that. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you. Um, so I'm going to hand over now to our um, our uh, final speaker. So Lee Sorensen uh, is joining us uh, also from Sydney. So we also appreciate him uh, getting up early this morning. Um, some of you may or may not have met Lee before or met uh, colleagues in his team. So I'll actually probably let him introduce himself uh, to begin with and talk about um, the work that his team does. Um, and then Lee, I think it'd be really useful just to spend uh, three or four minutes talking about um, some of the uh, insights that you're gaining from our um, industry partners in Australia and some of the things that uh, they're experiencing and going through and what they're considering in terms of how um, they're coping their businesses through, through this time. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Chris. Um, yes, I am in Sydney, even though I look like I'm at Uluru, everyone. I am in Sydney. Um, yeah, my team here, Industry Relations team, we spend our lives out and about talking to the Australian tourism industry, not doing a lot of out at the moment. Most of it's on Zoom, of course. But talking to the industry about uh, Tourism Australia, talking about what we do overseas in our markets, bringing some of the insights that our teams overseas are getting from the likes of yourselves and talking to the industry about them and then taking some of the industry insights back into the organisation here. So what I'm going to talk to you about now is some of those insights that we're getting 
uh, from the industry over the next few minutes about you know what's going on with them. Um, it's not all um, great news, of course, but uh, it's definitely there's some rising optimism amongst our our industry here. So, um, as I said to our own teams recently in a similar webinar, you know, for Australian tourism product, it's really been a, a case this year that's gone from bad with the bushfires, and Robin mentioned those a little earlier. Uh, and their impact mostly because you know the world thought Australia you know was on fire when as we all know here it was you know two to three percent of the country but the impacts that that had and now of course it's been pretty catastrophic for the industry with the closure of both international and domestic borders um, a hundred percent of Australian tourism companies that we talk to that my team talked to are, are, in, are impacted at the moment uh, as many of you will be aware most companies here in Australia most tourism companies have hibernated I'm not sure that's a a term that's being used elsewhere around the world, but they've hibernated their businesses, they've stood down their staff, uh, they've kept most of their, well, kept their essential staff on. And in Australia, most of these uh, staff that have been stood down from their jobs, you know, not all of them, but most of them, they're entitled to a wage subsidy here called JobKeeper, which keeps them uh, connected to their employer and their job. It's a base level wage that gives people around 70% of the national minimum wage and that runs through to the end of September. So that's keeping people with an income even though they're not at work. Um, and most of the sales and marketing people we're talking to and probably a lot of the ones that you're more likely to see in North America, uh, if they're not on JobKeeper, they're down to one to three days a week or they've been asked to take 20 to 30% pay cuts. But I'd estimate that something around 90% of the Australian tourism workforce is currently on those wage subsidies. So for many of our iconic international destinations where tourism really dominates the local economy, it's been a really um, severe few months, if not a severe year, but certainly the last three months. So places like Cairns, Port Douglas, the Witch Sundays, including places like Hamilton Island, you know, Byron Bay, the Blue Mountains, Kangaroo Island, in Western Australia, Broome, the Kimberley, Margaret River, Uluru, Alice Springs, They've all been massively impacted. And of course, some of these places, as many of you will well be aware, like Kangaroo Island, were already dealing with the direct impacts of, you know, of the bushfires. Um, so that's you know, where things are sort of at at the moment. But having said all that, there are a few positive things that are starting to break out now. We've, we've been fortunate in Australia, as again, many of you will be aware, that our natural advantages have helped us get control of this pandemic. Big Island, which has meant we've been able to cut ourselves off small spread out population, 25 million people in a country that's you know, the size of the USA. You know, a good health system means we're in a pretty good place at the moment. You know, many parts of the country are COVID free and have been for uh, many weeks now. So what we're starting to see is the country uh, begin to open up again. And um, this has been talked about already. We're starting to see some of our states relax the, the travel within the states. In New South Wales here, that happens in about a week's time uh, we where we will all be allowed out. Uh, so we're starting to see um, travel within those, we'll, we'll start to see, so travel within each state by residents of that state. And then slowly those domestic borders will come down and, and then hopefully soon after the international borders. So what's all this meant for operators? You know, most companies you know, we're talking to, while still in a great deal of pain, of course, and, un and uncertainty, you know, they've done their best to adapt to where things are at and they're looking to, uh, you know, where to from here, you know, what's next? So the quarter, sort of questions that, operators uh, are telling us that they're asking themselves, you know, is what happens when things uh, start to reopen? How do I scale my business back, back up? If I ran seven days a week previously, how many days do I run now? How do I manage social distancing in my business? You know, and related to that, how do I price my product in a socially distant world? You know, if I've been focused on international markets, if a lot of my business was coming from North America, for example, well, how, how do I adapt now and then in the next few months to the domestic market until North America you know, comes back? Um, operators know there'll be less demand when things do reopen because we'll only have that domestic market. So, you know, there's some concerns around what happens when these wage subsidies finish. You know, how do they manage that? One of the things that they've been asking that we, and it's not we at Tourism Australia necessarily, but the, the industry, how do we fix the, the travel distribution payment system um, up and down the system from suppliers to retailers, to wholesalers, to ground handlers, to inbound tour operators, et cetera. You know, we've seen people not paying each other. It's been an issue globally, I suspect, but it's one of the issues the industry here is saying, well, you know, what do we do collectively to fix this? Yeah, and of course they're concerned about the aviation situation globally, you know, a degree of uncertainty around what's going on both domestically and inbound. Yeah, the positive on that, I think, was that yesterday we saw the CEO of Qantas out 
uh, saying how they were planning to scale back up domestically in the next few months. So that was a really encouraging sign. Uh, and despite many of our, much of our industry being on reduced hours, they're keen to engage with us at TA and, and, they, and our partners. So they want to understand what Tourism Australia and our state and territory partners are doing, what's our strategic direction, so it can help them set their own. And they want to understand, you know, how they can leverage what we're doing. And importantly, they want to understand what's going on in markets around the world. They know it won't necessarily be good news, but they want to know what it is. And they're, uh, they're particularly interested in how many of our distribution partners around the world are, uh, are faring. That's all of you on this Zoom call. So I think one of the key questions for you all here is, is what uh, can the industry here be doing, industry in Australia, to best support the American travel trade? They want to understand what virtual opportunities are available, whether it's training agents, engaging travel buyers and media, whether it's social media. You know, our latest activity that you've heard about live from Australia has been really well received. Um, they're desperately keen to understand how future inquiries, even if these are for 2021, are going from North America and any aviation trends uh, on forward bookings that we might already be seeing. So any of that information that you can be feeding to Jane, Chris, Glenn and the team is going to be really helpful. Uh, they're super keen here to welcome back American travellers when the time is right with open arms. Maybe we'll be doing the uh, elbow bang rather than the handshake. And they're as frustrated as many on this call, I suspect, about understanding the timelines around when the borders might be opening. Uh, one of the big questions I think we're starting to get from a lot of markets um, is who's going to still be there in six to 12 months time, that is which operators, who will be open and what, for example, if they're a tour operator, will they be running? Our feel at the moment is that for most of the experiences you're familiar with and that, that the products that you see in market there regularly, like at a marketplace type event that Jane mentioned earlier, they'll still be around and will still be in operation. There'll no doubt be some consolidation and certainly some operators will close, but we expect most of those operators will um, still be alive and kicking. Uh, we do think that some of those smaller post arrival day tour type companies with small buses doing excuse me, doing tours out of a capital city, for example, may well struggle. Um, but most of the operators that you see in market we're expecting will be around. You know, one of the exercises we're working on now with our STO partners is getting an understanding around the country of who is open or who's planning to open and what they're running. So something we'll continue to update going forward. And of course, within that, you know, it's, you know, what elements of their business will be open. So if, as I mentioned, they ran day tours, will they still be running you know, daily tours now? Or will it be three or four times a week rather than seven times a week? One of the areas we've been asked by the industry here to help, and I talked to the, a number of operators this week about coming onto this call, they've asked us to help manage travel trade expectations around discounting. Um, we're getting a lot of inquiries, not so much from North America, I understand, but certainly from other markets about um, uh, people wanting extended credit terms, they're wanting up to 40% discounts from products here. And the industry here are saying to us, look, they just can't afford to discount heavily at the moment or extend credit terms to get profitless volume. Uh, we know at the moment the Australian dollar is doing pretty good. It's 20% lower than it was two years ago, 65 cents. You know, and more than one operator has pointed out to me, it's pretty good value and pretty uh, well discounted now as it is. The other area we can reassure agents uh, yeah, and your customers is that the industry is working through its operating procedures around operating safely in a COVID-19 world. Uh, Robin touched on this. So the protocols that they'll be putting in place to reassure customers that as operators, they've got the safety of visitors front of mind. And as they, their protocols are rolled out, we'll share those with you all. And lastly, on all this, we're seeing operators using this time, as many um, agents themselves are doing, to look at ways to improve their businesses. They're looking at how to reinvent themselves. They're looking at their product and service delivery. They're looking at their digital platforms. They're looking at upskilling themselves and their teams. They're looking at ways to enhance their environmental sustainability offerings. You know, some have used this time, if they can afford it, to undertake capital works on their products. So there's a lot of that going on as well. You know, we're intending to send out a, a Tourism Australia industry sentiment survey to monitor over the coming months the mood of the industry here. And we'll, as we start to exit this, um, we'll happily share that with the team there who can in turn share it with you so you can get a feel for you know, what the mood of the um, tourism industry here is in, in Australia. So in finishing up here, I guess there are just a, a couple of key things I wanted to reinforce to you all. And that is you know, how much the industry here values our relationships with our North American trade partners. You know, it's been tough, it's still tough, it's going to be tough for some time. 
However, despite that, there's a growing sense of optimism as domestic travel restrictions start to loosen, uh, that we're on the slow road to recovery, uh, because about a month ago, that road wasn't even in sight. The industry is starting to prepare for the post-COVID world and what that means, and operators are genuinely looking at rolling out the red carpet uh, for our North American trade partners and their customers. Uh, and last, just make sure you let us, and particularly the team there in North America, know what the industry can be doing here to help you. That's really important. So that's it. Uh, stay in touch. Hope that's helped you all understand where things are at with the industry here at the moment in Australia. Cool. That's amazing, Lee. And thank you. And that's a, it's probably a great way to kind of round off our session today, just to, in terms of your comments there, in terms of the optimism that our, our industry operators are starting to feel now, particularly um, in regards to, you know, some of the restrictions being lifted in Australia. And, you know, I think we're, I think that gives us all confidence that we're kind of um, on the, on the path, albeit slow in terms of getting back to some sense of normality over the coming weeks and months. So that's great. So thanks for joining us, Lee. Um, we, we've had a couple of comments um, uh, passing through during your talk, just in, just supporting the industry, just supporting the industry's perspective on expectations of discounting. So I think that's a message you can take back in terms of um, some support there for that for that perspective, which is really good. Um, so thank you. Um, thank you. We did have one question just to cover off, and I'll actually just ask maybe Lee and or Robin to answer. Um, and someone did ask uh, during the registration, just if, if there's any more details we can share about what we know at this stage about what um, the tourism experience looks like post COVID, um, given some of the restrictions that operators will have to contend with, um, if we know that at this stage. I think Lee kind of covered that already in terms of that they're working through it and thinking how do they need to pivot another overused words but pivot their business to be able to, to handle that. Um, <clears throat> there's guidance being put out around that. There's different programs coming out. I think one that came out yesterday here, which you might have heard of over there is the Flywell program from the Qantas Group, so Qantas and Jetstar and what they're doing. Um, to give that consumer confidence around flying, which is a great initiative. So I think we'll start to see more of those. Um, Lee, anything to add on that? Uh, not really, Robin, I'd say, I, th I think it's probably about a month away before we'll have a really clear picture of that. As I mentioned, like New South Wales, we can't even travel yet for another week or so. There's still some clarity that has to be um, uh, received from some of the state and territory governments who ultimately control um, when the uh, products open and the protocols they'll have to operate under. Um, so there's a little bit of clarity that the operators are needing for some particular product. So I would expect in the next month we'll have all that and we'll be sharing it with you. Cool. That's awesome. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Um, well, that probably wraps up uh, things for today. Um, just a, a couple of um, reminders for folks, if we could go to the next slide. Um, Wasn't well, that be great? Um, so just a couple of things before we wrap up. So just to remind everyone, if you guys haven't signed up um, to get the um, kind of ongoing updates from Tourism Australia, we do have our Essentials newsletter. Um, so you can register for this on our corporate website, um, so tourism.australia.com, and then uh, you'll see a subscribe to our news um, button there where you can register um, to get our global updates. So they come through monthly. Uh, and then you can also register for a North America version of Essentials, uh, which we uh, intend to send out quarterly. We haven't done one for, uh, for a number of uh, weeks now, but we will intend to be um, doing that quarterly going forward. So please sign up to Essentials um, if you don't receive that. It's just a great way to kind of keep on top of uh, what's going on uh, across the organization, how we're kind of supporting the recovery efforts at the moment. Um, and then just to wrap up, so um, we will be uh, hosting our next webinar. Um, so that will be on uh, June 2nd. Um, Roz, if you can go to the next slide. Yeah, so that'll be at June 2nd, uh, Tuesday, June 2nd, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, we know that the time um, is, a bit, is a bit funky, particularly for you guys on the East Coast, but um, it helps us bring in uh, some of our colleagues and partners in Australia to, to participate in the conversation, which uh, we hope that you will all find of value uh, as, we, as we go down uh, the series. Um, the other thing just to remind, uh, just to mention to people is, um, as Jane mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, we would really appreciate and value your feedback back on these updates and what you might like to hear from us as we as we put further updates together over the series and um, when you exit the meeting today you'll be presented uh, with a link to um, a survey which um, is a really quick survey that just asks for some feedback on today's session um, and also just um, gives you the opportunity to feedback on 
um, areas that you might like to see from us going forward. So we'd appreciate your uh, feedback on that. Uh, we'll also be uh, publishing uh, a web page whereby we'll be housing all of the recordings from the webinars um, and where we can PDF documents of the presentations as well. Uh, and you'll also then uh, be able to register for uh, future um, updates there. So we'll be communicating um, probably next, early next week um, how to register for the webinar on June the 2nd, uh, links to that web page, um, and then also uh, confirming uh, details of content for, for the next one as well. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you all so much for joining us. I also want to just give a shout out to our SDO colleagues, um, who I know are all uh, on the call today. Um, we work really collaboratively with them in the background and they've been feeding into uh, this update as well. So we, we appreciate it. Uh, their support and partnership uh, and lastly to our colleagues in Australia uh, thanks for joining us um, and uh, particularly uh, getting up um, early and lastly uh, thank you again for your patience at the start as we work through our technical issues uh, and uh, but for first first one out the gate so um, hopefully uh, hopefully you guys will join us for, for some more as we as we come over the next uh, coming weeks so thanks so much everyone and uh, enjoy the rest of your week <laughs>